camp details. Uh, we as a church, we, we send campers, students, to three different camps. And I just want to give you some details about those before we have some uh, students and maybe some counselors come and share about camp. But Lakewood is our elementary camp. And the directors for that this summer were Kit and Mindy Stater, Sarah Knoll, and Tanya Bailey. And there was a huge team of counselors, which I don't think I got a complete list. So I don't want to start listing names. Or I'm going to, you know how it goes, you're going to forget somebody. But we had amazing servants um, that helped with Lakewood Camp. And we had 21 campers from our church go to Lakewood Camp. So that's just our elementary camp. We had Camp Adventure which we had nine junior high campers and myself go to that camp. And then we had a high school camp, which is at Epworth Forest, where we had 18 students, Cindy Gray, Michelle Barton, and myself. So all in all, we as a church family were able to send 48 campers to camp. And yes, it was great. And there were many stories. Um, I challenge you, or I encourage you, when you leave today, if there's some students uh, hanging around, you know, ask them about camp, you know, because there's so many stories, and we can only share so much in one service. But amazing things happen at camp. There's commitments made, first-time commitments, and just stories of people getting close with God. But I do want to say thank you to our church family, because you have given us your prayers as we plan the three camps. If you go to the donut shop and get a donut or coffee, all the funds there go to help kids go to camp. And then we even had some of you give full scholarships. So some camp students wouldn't even have gone, been able to go to camp if some of you didn't provide full scholarships as well. And then just to think of the directors uh, of Lakewood. You know, I mentioned Kent and Mindy Stater, you know, the Noel family, the Bailey family, and Cindy and Michelle at high school camp, and all the counselors, because sometimes you have to leave family, you know, and you have to, you, you sacrifice some things when you do camp, and I'm just, in, I'm thankful that those that were able to uh, serve at camp were able to this summer. Now, all good. So we had three camps. So I, this is sort of like a laid back sharing because we have some that went to Lakewood. We had some that went to Camp Adventure. And then of course we had some that went to Epworth Forest. So we have some people sharing, but when you imagine a lot of people are on vacation this weekend, you know, school is gonna start. So. I don't have any of my junior higher campers here, but some of them text me some things they would have said if, you know, they would have been here. But do I have anyone here that went to Lakewood that would like to share about Lakewood? I'll just ask that. I don't think there's many in this service. We had, oh wait, we do, yes, Lakewood. Thank you, Riley. Hello, so obviously I wasn't a camper because I'm not in elementary school. Um, <laughs> but I went as a counselor for my second year this year um, and it was really cool. Um, one thing that God has really shown me throughout um, all the camps that I went to this summer um, was that God provides. Um, so it was really, really stormy um, at Lakewood like the entire week, um, but we made it through. Um, but one day we were like, okay, God, please don't let it storm all day. Don't let it storm. And the storm passed us all until at the very end of the day when we were about to have um, our showers and brush them teeth. Um, <laughs> and um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and so we, were, we were, had our toothbrushes in hand and we were walking down to the bathhouse and then a bunch of camp staff to say, run to Lakewood Lodge because there's a storm. We're like, oh great, okay. So we run all the way over to Lakewood Lodge, which is like the office area. That's where the directors sleep and such. Um, and so 
we get there and like a lot of the kids are crying because they don't like storms obviously um and so we were just trying to comfort them and stuff um and then we had an impromptu worship session um so we sang set a fire like we sang um up here today um and that was really really powerful because you could just tell how the kids like calmed down and they were like okay we're okay now um and it was really cool to see the little kids like lean on god to get through that even though it's kind of hard um and so that was really powerful for me. And that also opened the door for um, Kent Stater to share his testimony the night before commitment night. Um, and that really opened the door for a lot of kids that hadn't really heard about Jesus that came there that week. Um, so that was really cool to see God work through that. Um, and I'm going to share about Epworth, too, since I'm already up here. <laughs> okay, so I went to Lakewood first, and then Epworth was a couple weeks ago. Um, so this is the high school camp. Um, and so the week before, well, prior to um, camp, I was really praying, okay, God, show me yourself. I want to feel you at camp. I want to be able to grow deeper after I'm out of camp and not just stay the same. Um, and so I was really, really praying about that before camp. And so I got to camp and like, okay, here I am, God, show me, like, I'm ready. <laughs> um, and then Monday passes and like, I feel the, I feel the presence of God, but it's not as intense as like I was really, really hoping. Um, and so I keep praying, I keep praying. I'm like, okay, God, where are you? Come on, it's about time. <laughs> um, but Wednesday night, we had a silent night kind of deal. Um, so basically, they had like um, scripture verses on the slides, and we just sat there and read them. And I get scared when like they have like slides up there because I'm a slow reader, so I like read it really fast, and I'm like, okay, you gotta gotta read it before it goes away. And but it was there for like two minutes straight. I was like, well, I got a lot of time, <laughs> but um, it stayed there for a long time, so we could like really really absorb it, and that was really really powerful for me. Um, and they showed a couple videos that made me cry because I'm a crier, um, <laughs> and so that night we after like the worship or the sermon session thing that we had for the silent night, um, we had our worship. And so I went up and I was just praying, okay, God, I'm ready. I'm ready to feel you. Come on, man. <laughs> um, and so I just get on my, well, I'm on my feet, obviously. Um, I'm in front of the stage and I'm just holding my hands up. And I'm like, okay, God, I'm ready. And shortly after, I don't even hear the music or the words that they're saying because I'm just so like, I'm just so experiencing the presence of God. I haven't ever experienced that way before. It was just so amazing. It was like God was like physically like giving me a hug and holding me. He was like, okay, Riley, it's going to be okay. Um, and like I've had some internal struggles recently and like it just felt like God just took it all away and it was like this weight just was lifted and it was really, really powerful. So camp is great. Send your kids to camp. Send your grandkids to camp. It's the best thing ever. So yeah. <laughs> Any others, Lakewood or not? I did want to read a few texts I got from the uh, junior hires. Let me find that real quick. So one student sent me a message about how when they went to Camp Adventure, they had like a lot of anger built up inside of them, angry just about many things. But being at camp, they just saw the anger, you know, get less and less as God filled that and helped him with that. Uh, another junior high camper said, they came to camp with lots of doubts, you know, a lot of questions, um, but they were able to get a lot of answers, you know, to questions about their faith, questions about the Bible, why they were at camp. And one student was just so thankful that someone in our church family was able to give like an entire scholarship. So this student would not have been able to attend camp if that person wanted have uh, gave like they did. So I was thankful for some of the junior hires sending us some messages about camp. But but we can turn to high school camp if, okay. Hey, there you go. Hello, my name is Heidi Gray. And when Ray asked me to speak um, about my camp experience, I didn't know where to start. Um, God is so faithful, and he has been showing himself to me in such amazing ways, so I thought I should just tell you about some of the truths that he's taught me recently. Um, so before camp had even begun, God had really been asking my obedience and sharing my story. 
about um, when I got a traumatic brain injury and just getting past that. And um, I just had listened to the lies of the devil and that I wasn't worthy to be used by God because I wasn't always the strongest Christian or the most loving and forgiving per person. The devil had convinced me that somehow I could either be worthy of grace or I could um, earn his grace in the first place. And when I fell into sin, I couldn't pick myself up to God's standards. I became hopeless, and I didn't feel like I deserved to be used in any way by God. By the day before we left for camp, I was reading out of 1 Chronicles in chapter 16, and I came across a verse that God says, where God says, oh, shoot, not God. <laughs> okay, I came across a verse that says, give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Um, sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wonderful acts. Well, when I was reading this, it was kind of like God was tapping me on the shoulder like, hey, are you actually going to listen this time? Are you going to obey me? And I was a little shook up because everything in me was telling me that I didn't deserve to even speak his name, let alone be used by him through telling my story. And yet he was asking me to step out of my comfort zone and let him work through me. I didn't feel like God had gotten what he paid for when he died on the cross for me. And I just felt like he deserved more out of me, but I just kept falling and messing up. So for God to want to work through me was too much of a privilege that I knew I didn't deserve. I carried this burden into camp thinking God would work on me in a different way, but I was wrong. On the second day of camp, we were having evening worship out on the island in the middle of the lake. We started singing Reckless Love, and it just really hit me. His love bankrupt heaven for us. His love doesn't consider himself first. His love isn't selfish or self-serving. He doesn't wonder what he will gain or lose by putting himself out there. He simply gives himself away on the off chance that one of us might turn around and take him. It all just seemed to really sink in how unconditionally he loves us and how he sees past all wrongs and loves us still. Um, he sees our potential when we feel worthless and ashamed of ourselves. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. This is the gift of God. If you look at the definition of grace, it is unmerited favor. Unmerited actually means it's something you can't earn. We don't deserve it, and we can't work hard enough to get it. We get it simply through belief. John 6, 28 through 29 says, when they asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one I sent. Jesus is saying, this is it, guys. Listen to me. You might have thought I was about to list off all these rules and regulations and laws or all these things that I expect of you. But he says instead, I want you to believe. He understands that when we truly believe that, it's going to change our perspective on life and who we are on the inside. He knows it will transform us and break the chains that bind us. He knows that if we are working at this list of rules apart from grace, we're never going to fulfill it. We are never going to be enough. But what's amazing is that his grace is always enough. After he revealed that to me, I was just letting it sink in during worship one night when I just really felt like I needed to finally give it completely up to God because I knew I had been carrying the weight of my sin and I was trying to redeem myself when I knew I never could. Overwhelmed with his great love and mercy, I just cried out to God and asked him not to, and asked him to use me, not because I was worthy to be used by God, but because my God was all-powerful and he could work through even the most broken people. It was in that moment when I finally said, okay, God, I'm ready for you to use me, broken or whole. Seconds later, I felt a tap on my shoulder, so I turned around to see who it was. And a pastor was there with his youth group that I had met the last year at camp, where he had helped me through a seizure. Um, he stood there with tears in his eyes and looked at me and said, Heidi, I was trying to write my sermon for Sunday, and nothing I wrote seemed to be right. God just kept telling me that he wanted me to say something else and I had no idea what he wanted of me. But just now, I looked up from my seat and saw you with your arms held high, singing your heart out to your king. And he said to me, she's your sermon. Then he began to take a bracelet off his wrist, which read, Jesus loves me. And he began to tell me that last year, after my seizure at camp, he had been so overwhelmed with how I had held firm in my faith, even after three years of dealing with seizures and trying to overcome my traumatic brain injury. He had been so impacted by God shining through me that he had gone and bought this bracelet to remind himself that I could, if I could smile and praise God through the struggles of three years of a serious brain injury, then he could keep fighting through whatever he faced. He then went on to say he had worn the bracelet the whole year to remind himself that he could rejoice in his sufferings and that he wanted me to have the bracelet to remind me now that God wasn't done with me. 
I know I'm not the only one who struggles with feeling like you have to earn God's love and feeling like you just can't be used because you've messed up so many times. But I just want you to know that God is never done with you. He's never done. Uh, anyone else like to share? My name is Maddie, and this is my second year going to Camp Epworth, and um, it was a super fun time, and I just grew with my youth group so much. We became this, like, giant family, closer than we already were, and that was just really impactful to me, and is it okay if I just share about one of the sermons? I, okay, um, so I, one of the sermons was, we were on the island again that night, and we, the, the pastor or the speaker or whatever, he was like, talking about his daughter and he said that she had this like disorder where she would like throw up a lot and whatever and he said that like every time that she did she would like call out to her dad be like daddy like come help me or whatever like help me clean up and he was like he said that he was never ashamed of her mess like he was never mad at her for making a mess and he said that's how our heavenly father is he doesn't like he sees our mess and he he doesn't like look at us with like oh well you're too too messy for me I can't clean you up like he takes our mess and like wraps up wraps us up in his arms and is like it's okay I'm gonna help clean you up so Hi, I'm April, and I went to Camp Epworth, and um, I just got diagnosed as being a diabetic, um, I don't know, a few months ago, and um, I don't know, I was really struggling with just trying to deal with it on my own and pretending like I could be the one who could control everything and make for sure that everything just goes right, and like, you know, I was trying to do it all on my own, and I was giving myself so much stress and anxiety over it because I was just trying to do it all by myself. But when um, it was the third night, the silent sermon that Riley was talking about, and um, afterwards we had like one last song, and um, I just gave it all to God. I was like, I'm done trying to control things because you're the only person who can actually help me and who can truly understand how I'm feeling. And it just was so relieving because I'm such a person who loves to just like bottle everything up and not show people that I'm struggling. I don't like people to like see me vulnerable. And I was just very vulnerable and I was, I just let it all out because I can't deal with it on my own. And then also um, Heidi passed out one of the nights and um, at first everyone was like, oh, just leave her alone. There's enough people like, here and stuff and then she called me back and she wanted me to sing to her and um, <laughs> um, it's crazy but she could lay there forever but as soon as she was like you know not doing as well but when I came in and I'd sing worship songs to her she just completely calmed down and she'd just you know, lay there in, in my arms, and I'd just sing to her and sing to her. And then eventually she was able to sing with us, and that's always what brings her back. It's worship every time we just sing to her, and it's, it's amazing. It's the power of worship. It's really real. And so that's what I have. Okay, well, I wasn't a student, but I was a counselor. Actually, I was... <laughs> and um, Ricky was the uh, speaker that week, and he was from Manhattan, and he was really good. But there was one uh, service that I um, just jotted down some notes because I thought it was so powerful. No matter what, there will always be an enemy, a lion, some opposition, something to obstruct the way for you. If you are seeking after God, this will be true. There will always be a reward when we fight against that opposition. You're going to experience some setbacks, 
some failures, and it's okay. You decide if you will go after the lion, and he will give you what you need to overcome it. I just thought that was really good. Um, the speakers, the worship, everything was wonderful at, at um, the camp. And um, boy, if you haven't sent your kids, please consider it for next year. It's just powerful how the Holy Spirit just shows up. And those kids are open to listen. It's, it is really neat. There is one thing that I want to show you, this um, like backpack thing. Um, they had missionaries come and speak um, every day. And this one was a gentleman who spoke for Sari Bari. This is the company that um, in, um, is in Thailand. It's actually in a lot of countries. But um, this gentleman came up and he said, he goes, well, I used to be sitting out there with you. I was a youth leader and I had a bunch of kids. And we came one time and there was a missionary that spoke about um, uh, being a, a person who helps out with trafficking. And um, he said, I would never have thought that God was going to use me to, to help out with this. And um, God laid it on his heart. He became an undercover agent in Thailand to rescue trafficking girls. And he said, you know, it's amazing how God can work in our lives. And I thought, you know, how way leads to way. If we are open and allow him to lead and guide us, he can. And so he described what it was like to go into a brothel in Thailand. And he said, you went in there, and then they would bring the girl to you. And he said, well, what's your name? And she couldn't give her her name. She goes, I can only tell you my number. I'm number nine. And um, he, he said, well, you know, where do you come from? Well, she wasn't able to tell that, but she was able to say, I'm from the country. And why are you here? Well, my, my family needs money, and my daddy brought me in. So you hear a lot of this, and he said, it's just heartbreaking. He said, but what we do is we offer them, like, education so that they can come out of it. And so um, this gal who made this one, her name is Kempona, Kalpona. And um, she is now on her own sewing and making bags and all sorts of things to uh, support her family instead of being in the um, brothel, is what they call them. So what they do is they're a not, they do not call themselves Christian because Thailand would not allow them to be in the country. And um, so it's a, a company that's all Christian, but they can't say that so that they can go in and start rescuing girls. And they give them education so that they can actually sew or do whatever they can to make money to help out the family. But what I thought was really neat was they offered the children a way to serve. You know, they, they gave them missionaries every day that they could go and um, talk to. I mean, that this missionary would come and talk and they could go and listen. And I thought it was really important because it's important that we understand that it's all about serving, you know, helping out helping out others, you know. So um, camp is just an incredible time for kids and for counselors <laughs> and cooks. <laughs> and Michelle, I know she's here. It's, it is. It's, it's a wonderful time that the Holy Spirit can just come and, and minister to the people, minister to kids. So next year, if you know of anybody, get it, encourage them to go. It would be so impactful. And thank you, Ray, too, for getting us there. Okay, anyone else? No. Oh. Mika. Mika. How do you back your phone up? Yeah, come sit. Hi, um, I'm Becca. I'm sorry if this is bad. I'm kind of like making it up as I go along. I'm not actually making it up, but this did happen, so. So um, I was going to camp and I was kind of like nervous. I was like, didn't know what to expect. And I was like kind of nervous. And um, I went there and I was like, I probably won't feel God. I don't know. <laughs> um, but on the silent night where we, they had slides up on the screen, I was, I could really feel God. And um, when it's like silent, you can only hear thoughts, you know? And it's just, I'm constantly, like, thinking, like, I'm not good enough or, like, stuff like that. And 
just I felt really overwhelmed and then in the midst of that like I felt God like say he loves me and I've never felt God like like that and I've always heard like stories of like how people felt God and I'm like that's never happened to me like why why doesn't God speak to me like he speaks to other people and when I felt God it was just really powerful so Hi, my name is Michelle Borton. This was the second year that I went um, when I received the text from Ray, Pastor Ray, and he was like, hey, and he started asking me if I'd be able to go to camp, and I was like, well, let me check the schedule, and let me get back to you, and let me pray about it, and I don't even think it was the next day, and I was already telling him, okay, I'll go. I said, well, first of all, I said, is Cindy going? <laughs> he said, yes, and I said, Okay, I thought about it more, and I thought, okay, well, if somebody else was meant to be, then okay. Well, I sent them probably back before the next day, so. But um, it's awesome. I mean, the only thing I can say, the main thing that comes into my mind first is the word wow. Just to see these young men and women, I'd say, I mean, young campers, teens, um, but they're love for God and Jesus and just watching them worship and praise and and just watching things happen just like they're saying I mean the Holy Spirit was in that room I mean we saw it in many different ways um, there were a couple instances that um, one morning for breakfast um, we usually would sit at the table but we'd try to interact with other campers and such but I saw this older gentleman sitting at the other table by himself and I felt really bad at first, and I thought, why is he sitting there by himself, and who is he? And I noticed him the first day. He had some tattoos kind of on his head or something, and I thought, okay, well, I wasn't sure who he was, but um, I met him and stuff, and I talked to him over at the beach house after we ate breakfast and started just talking with him. And then uh, I said, well, I really felt bad that you were sitting there by yourself eating breakfast. And he said, oh, that's okay. He said, I kind of like to sit there by myself. It's not as noisy. And so um, I found out who he was and was what he was doing there and stuff. And, and then we invited him for lunch one day. I think actually Heidi maybe did. And we really got to know him even more. And very interesting um, he just had a birthday recently, Carl, and I think Carl touched many lives there. I know he touched many in our group, and myself even. The last day we were leaving Friday morning when the seniors had a program, um, my husband came up to, because we had two vehicles, one to transport campers and one for the all the items and the sleeping bags, pillows, all their gear. And so he was there in the auditorium, and um, Carl said to him, is it okay if I hug your wife? <laughs> and he said, well, sure. So anyway, now I have him on Facebook, and you know, but, but not only that, our speaker, Ricky Ortiz, like they had mentioned, and his daughter, Gia, she, we, he came to eat dinner with us one evening and really shared, and um, Victoria had had a question, and um, and, and he had to go to a meeting, but when he came back, he, you know, he was talking, he said, is Victoria here? Can I talk to her? And he thought that, she thought that was really special, that he knew that he wasn't really done with her question or comment that she'd ask, and that he gave her that time to do that. And so it was a really neat experience, and he showed us a lot of pictures and uh, shared a lot of things about his life and with us in the campers, so... Um, and then I think that um, the band, um, what is, what's the name of it? Um, oh, I can't think of it now. I had it on my mind. But they're out of uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And um, it'll come to me after I sit down. But they were awesome, too. And they had their um, son named Brave with them. And so we, Cindy went over and sat with them. Um, Aaron, her husband Aaron Chip, and Tamar Chip was their name. Modern Day Cure is the name of the band. And she went and talked to him and sat because he was there with the baby. So 
Um, I really like the way that a lot of our youth in our group, even our campers and Pastor Ray, we just really intermingled with a lot of other people and and got to meet so many other Christians out there. And um, like like Cindy said, um, I could stand up here and talk longer because uh, <laughs> I give her the credit for um, teaching me how to kayak there. This was the second year, and we actually got to kayak in a two-person kayak this year instead of a single one last year. But she encouraged me, and I conquered my fear last year of doing that. And um, as I said, I was too afraid. And she said, you can do it, you can do it. So. But yeah, there's a lot of pictures and a lot of moments and a lot of memories made there. And I do thank the church for allowing me to be a part of that and part of the special event. And I encourage any uh, parents out there, please send your, your youth to any of these camps. My son's gone to many and I've had the privilege of going to two now. So thank you. We'd like to share with you, uh, Riley actually put this slideshow together. It shows uh, all three cams, so if you want to watch that with us, and then we'll close with a final song today. <laughs> 